Heavenly Father, we worship you, we exalt you. Lord, there is none like you. There is no one who can ever be like you or who will be like you. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to be here this morning, to hear your word, <clears throat> and to um, that it may find fertile ground in our hearts. Lord, let us be receptive of it. And God, um, at this time, also use me as a vessel. I know nothing, and I am fully um, depending on you to share your word. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us have our seats. Praise God, church. Praise God again. Um, my name is Anna Nyawera Kandu. By God's grace, I have been saved. Um, I have not met his standard. I, am, I, have, I have never been able to meet his standard. But by his grace, I am saved this day. And I thank him so much for the opportunity to be up here. Um, I'd also like to thank the vicar, because um, he's the custodian of this pulpit. So um, I have just been given an opportunity to share. Um, so we'll go to our readings of today, um, which were drawn from the book of Numbers, chapter, 10, chapter 9, verse 15 to 23, and 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 17 to 24. Um, and perhaps just continuing in our theme of uh, breaking camp and um, our journey with God, uh, I'll anchor um, the sermon in those two readings. So just a bit of context for the book of Numbers. This was a time when the children of Israel were wandering in the desert. They'd come out of Egypt, and now they were adapting to this long journey that was ahead of them to the Promised Land. And sometimes it's called the Book of Wanderings. And uh, this journey was ideally supposed to take 11 days from Egypt to the Promised Land, but um, because of the murmuring of the children of Israel, it took them 40 years. So, um, more of the book of Numbers is that God was giving a lot of instructions on how they would live um, now as a community in Israel. Firstly, you know, setting up what was called the tabernacle, which was where they would worship God. So, the tabernacle, um, just for a mental picture, was... Um, what God had instructed that they put up to bring their sacrifices where they would worship God. And it uh, was three components. There was an outer court, which had a big curtain, then an inner one, and then the innermost place um, called the Holy of Holies. So um, just as you read the book of Numbers and uh, more of the, the books of the law that Moses wrote, uh, you see that there were so many details or very many components of uh, the tabernacle. There were curtains, there was um, ornament, what they call them ornaments or uh, tools that they would use to worship God. And uh, for this verse, or this uh, scripture in Numbers, the title was The Cloud and the Fire. So what this meant was that there was a cloud that would always rest on the tabernacle when God's presence was there. So when it's like, um, I don't know if we can give an example in, in Buckingham Palace, when the queen's flag is up, we know that she's in. When it's down, that means she's not around. Similarly, uh, when the cloud was at the tabernacle or rested on the tabernacle, God's presence meant that they should be there. And then at night, it looked like fire. But when the cloud lifted and moved, then they had to set, uh, put everything uh, back, pack them up, the Levites would carry them and they would move to the next place that God wanted them to go. So it was sort of like a GPS or a compass that they would um, know where to go next. And what was very interesting and why I mentioned um, the different components of uh, the tabernacle is there were very, there were very many and very intricate. So imagine you'd have to take, taking up all the pews, all the Bibles, and would carry them to the next place. And what was uh, really significant about this is that the children of Israel followed it obediently. So even though um, God was only there for from evening to the next day, they would pack up and move to the next place. If it was one day, and this is in verse 22, if it, whether it was one day, one month, or one year, they would go wherever God had sent them uh, to go. 
So, maybe we can now bring it closer home uh, to us. Um, we're in a wilderness, just like the children of Israel, a place where we are constantly journeying and ultimately the promised land will, will be eternal life. And in this wilderness, I think it's very important for us to have the presence of God wherever we are because there's a lot of indecisiveness in this journey. We can be torn. There are good days as well, but it is most important that um, we acknowledge or are very alert to God's presence. The other thing is obedience. Well, I think maybe the children of Israel had a choice. If they didn't want to move, you know, they would not have moved, but they were obedient to God's following or God's instruction. So I bring us to um, Psalms, uh, First Samuel, sorry, chapter 15, verse 22. And this talks about um, obedience. And the prophet Samuel, uh, he was also a priest, said that, has the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obedience to the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to need is better, to heed, sorry, is better than the fat of rams. That is how high um, obedience is on, you know, on that scale. Um, it is better for you to be obedient, to heed to God's word, than you know, to bring all these things that uh, you think will please God. So what are some of the really important things or benefits of obedience to God? Firstly, and most importantly, is he will guide you. Um, as we see in the story of um, the tabernacle, when the cloud moved, they obeyed and he led them to where, where they needed to go next. Another very important thing about obedience is found in the book of John chapter 14 verse 15. Obedience is actually an illustri illustration of your love of God, or your love for God. So it says, if you really love me, you will keep and obey my commands. Another benefit or another important um, Thing that comes from obedience is that you are blessed when you obey. In Psalms chapter 119 verse 2, it said, blessed and favored by God are those who obey his testimonies. Another thing, and which is really nice, um, which brings us to the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, is that you are God's friend when you obey. And in John chapter 15 verse 14, uh, it says that you are my friends if you keep on doing what I command you. So let us um, think about how we need to obey God. Um, all the instructions are found in this wonderful book, and he has set it out for us. So when we are obedient, we are his friends, he will guide us, we are illustrating his love, and even showing it to others around us. Our other reading was from the book of Second, First Corinthians, chapter 9, verse, sorry, chapter 7, verse 17, all the way to 24. And uh, again, for context, uh, the Corinthians were, maybe I would describe them like Nairobians. It was a very bustling metropolitan for people from all walks of life. And uh, Paul at this time was talking to a church that also had you know, pagan practices. And Paul talked about um, different practices that uh, I guess, like, for example, circumcision or people who are slaves and things like that. So he emphasized that it was not the outward, um, the, the, or the things that we did uh, that showed our faith. And that is why he told us to just be as you are. Let remain as you are with God when he calls you. So you need not and you know, maybe change the way you dress. It, it, ultimately, it will, it will show out, but um, our outward actions will not be what uh, matter. It is the inward transformation that will ultimately lead to our transformation outward. So in this journey of obedience, come as you are, just the way you are. You don't need to work on yourself, to fix yourself, to come to God. Just come as you are, 
and he will guide you. And if you are obedient to him in this journey, um, there are so many benefits of being in his presence. Um, therefore, it is just a call again to come as you are, be obedient, and wherever God sends you, wherever he asks you to go, wherever he directs, let us go. And that is the sermon. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for your word that is true, that is light, that is life. Dear God, this day, um, as you illustrated in your word about the children of Israel and you directing them everywhere they went through a cloud and fire, Lord, this day we also want to be directed by you. Lord, help us to uh, see the way that you are taking us. Help us to be obedient. And Lord, may you um, take us just as you are. And thank you for that assurance that we need not be um, have outward uh, changes, Lord, but it is the heart that you will look at. We praise you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, amen.